Hey guys, so this video is going to be about some of my completed colored in pictures that I have in my adult coloring books. I like a collection of that and I'll be talking about coloring books a little bit and things like that. I know you've seen some pages out of this book already, but I'll just try to quickly move through it so this video isn't too long. Um, one of my favorite things about adult coloring books um, is mostly like when you have anxiety and things like that make your mind just go, go, go 100 miles an hour, adult coloring books really helps you to stay focused because when you're coloring you have to really zone in and focus on one thing at a time and so it just kind of just keeps your mind off of other things for at least a short while. So I'm going to flip through these and kind of give you some of my finished pages and sort of explain why things were done the way they were. Um, so the first page I did, I wanted to color these buildings in like multiple colors, something funky, something that you don't see every day, like you don't really normally see purple, green, bright colored buildings just walking down the street and what had inspired me to do that with my very first page was somewhere in the the um, description of this book which by the way this is the this is by Penny Press and it's the Living Colors 39 Peaceful Landscapes that I got at my local Dollar General um, but somewhere in here it says something like you know um, right here I think it is actually there are no rules these are your pictures to color your way. And there was somewhere else in the book where it's talking about, you know, with the thick paper that they have, you can use multiple mediums. So they said, you know, try colored pencils here and paint here for nice effects and things like that. So anyway, because they reminded me that, you know, I don't have to do color everything in here naturally. I can make it crazy and fun. So that's why my first idea for my first picture here was to kind of create funky looking buildings. Um, and I apologize if you see any reflection through this from the burnishing. I have to use the camera light because there's like no natural lighting at all right now. It's really rainy out. Um, so then a lot of these landscape pictures I have done with more natural looking colors. Um, but that's just what I wanted to do. So with um, with lighting, when it comes to lighting and shading, like picking where your light source is, you know, of course you can put it anywhere in the picture, anywhere you think it would look the best. But one way that one little trick that I use to kind of help me keep track of, you know, is my light source here, here, here. Where's my light source coming from? Is a lot of times like um, most of the time I color in my bed. So if I'm laying in my bed coloring and my lamp is over here to the right of me, my right top corner most of the time. I'll use that as, let's say, my light source, like where the sun would be in this picture. So that's why all the shading is sort of around here. And Now some pictures kind of, like, you know, this one, it seems like it would work that way anyway because a lot of shading's right here, so you couldn't really do the light source this way. Some pictures will basically hint to where the light source is. But I use the same technique for even when I'm creating my own pictures and drawing. I'll just kind of use like where's my light source in real life and I'll just use that as a reference a lot of times to keep track of where it is. Um, same thing with this. Even though it marked this as shading, you could have put shading on this side and made this the lighter side. It, it's whatever you feel like doing, but again my light source, my lamp, my bedroom lamp came from this top right corner so I said okay well that's where my sunshine is. Um, here is also more natural looking colors um, and the first time trying to figure out what to do with this mountain with the gray tones and blue tones. And then here in the other video where I showed you these pictures, I said that this type of art style looks like it should be more like a painting instead of just regular colored pencil coloring. So I wanted to make this look really pastel, very bright light colors. Um, and hopefully it portrays as more of like a painting. And this one, I don't really like how the night turned out. Um, I need to blend this black a lot better, obviously. And here, you're not going to be really able to tell because of the camera lighting. But there is different tones of like yellow to orange to white. 
to create like that ring of light sort of effect. Um, and then this is one of the first times where I attempted to color a sky and honestly the the best like I tried looking up an actual color palette to color the sky but honestly the best thing to help you is to just look at pictures or go outside and look at the natural sky and that'll sort of help you determine your sky colors and then this building I wanted to make a big bright pink building and if I go to my color wheel in the front here um, it doesn't really have a spot for pink like directly but I'm assuming pink would be somewhere around these orange and red colors so the opposite to that on the color wheel is like the greens and the blues so that's why I made the rooftops green and then this one is one of my favorite pictures in this book where I, again I tried to go for more pastel light colors to make it look more like it was a painting like an oil painting maybe um, and I feel like the sky turned out a bit better here, so that means I'm getting a little bit more of the hang of it. I really love the peacocks, how I have, you know, it's mostly a blue palette, and then I have some bright greens and red and the nice sky, and then there's purple mountains back here, because the way the sunset would be heading it, I assumed it would be purple. Same thing here, I obviously like purple mountains. Um, and then this gray is sort of meant for like that misty effect. I don't think I captured it as well as I wanted to or would have liked to. And then I really like the way this waterfall turned out. I'm not sure if the light is going to give any type of reflection here. In fact, let me zoom you guys in a little bit closer. Okay, sorry if the camera shake shook a little. Um, but yeah, I really like burnishing water. I'll take my white Prismacolor and I'll press really hard once I have all the colors on here that I know I'm going to want. And it just kind of gives it this, I don't know, really smooth surface. I just really like the way it turned out. I haven't finished this one yet because this one is going to be given to somebody. This is what I mean by you don't have to go by the rules. Now this is a, a picture from The Hobbit that I hadn't even realized until I decided to read this passage here. Um, but I decided to not necessarily follow like a a more real world look where the grass is green and the trees is another shade of green um, and I also decided not to really go by exactly how the Hobbit has it even though it's a um, a place from the Hobbit I wanted to make this more fantasy style I wanted pink trees with like a reddish pink trunks purple bushes and then this is like a dark blue green and then you go to the lighter blues as you go on here and I wanted lime highlighted green <laughs> stones and so I I thought it was really fun coloring this picture with all the funky different colors and you can see all my different color swatches for it it was definitely a lot of fun coloring this picture and then with this picture sorry for the shaking again I told myself you know instead of doing stone gray tones on this walk here I wanted to make it a bright pink and sort of play with my pink colors and around this time in the middle of completing this picture I received more Prismacolors in the mail that I had ordered so I, I really just wanted to play with like the magentas and the different shades of pink this one seems kind of spooky I don't know why, but I wanted to make it super green. Um, it just kind of looks like, sorry for the shaking, one of those cabins in a, a scary movie where it's just like, don't go there. And then I think this is the last one I completed in this book. Um, the book's not finished. Let me actually, I'll pull you guys back out a little bit. The book is not complete. Like, there's still plenty of pages to color. But I think this is the last one. I colored in here and I really like the way the water turned out in this picture compared to that other waterfall that I did. Um, I do like the way this one turned out as well but see how this is more like a light sun, sun, sunshiny blue and these are a bit more dark colors and I just really love this waterfall. I just, I don't know, I like the way I did the shadows in it, the reflections, 
that shade, that tone of color where it's like that bluey green. I think um, the Prismacolor pencils that I used was Light Aqua and Aquamarine and I can't remember what other ones, but I, I think those two were in that waterfall and I don't know, I just really loved the way that turned out. And I even liked the way the mountains turned out a bit better because you see here there's like a really light color here for where that sunlight is directly hitting that and then it gets a bit darker here and then even more darker as we move down farther and and I went for like a lighter green here because I assumed that, that would be sort of it looked sort of like um, moss on the stones there so I wanted to create like a mossy color I really like this picture though and yeah there's plenty more to color in here but it was after I finished this picture that I received my pop manga coloring book in the mail. And I did a pop manga, manga coloring book flip through video um, not too long before this one where I just sort of like flipped through each page and showed you it once I got it. And I was waiting to complete at least a few pages in this book before I showed you guys my, well, my colored in pages. I wanted there at least to be more than just like one. So let me make sure that you guys can see everything here. This book is quite a bit larger than that penny press book. Well, I mean, not too much larger, but the penny press book is one printed one-sided, which means there's a colored, a picture to color on one side, and over here there's only like words. The pop manga has double print. And I had said in another video that I really prefer the print on one side because that way when you close the book, you won't get transfer onto the other picture. Now you can avoid that by putting like tracing paper or something in between here, but then that becomes kind of a, has a hassle because as you're flipping through your pages, papers start falling out. And but anyway, this book is, as it says here, it's a real journey through a cute, curious, bizarre, beautiful world. It's definitely strange. If you're into manga and anime and strange things, you'll like this book. So, I had never done really, I mean I have done blonde hair before, but not really like trying. <laughs> so that's like the first real try attempt with blonde hair, blue eyed little girl, and I thought it turned out very well. And I decided in my first page to color in this book that I wanted to make, because obviously these are myth mythical creatures, they're unicorns, so I wanted to make their eggs rainbow colored and their hair came out rainbow colored but different colored than the eggshell was and the little hamster narwhal thing, a crazy color, and it was really fun. And I really like how there's a picture here that you can color right at the beginning of the book. I feel like my camera is just not hitting it with the quality and the lighting. But this one was another large piece, really fun to color. This time I decided let's go crazy, give her purple hair, and um, give her the purple wagon here, add some purple and violet in her crown piece, and also some like aqua colors. And I made her dress several different shades. Maybe you can see it better here. But I really love the way the purple hair turned out. I really like the shading and highlights I created and then I wanted these to still have that sort of aqua and purple color so that they know that they came from her. Her tones are basically like aqua, purple, and pink. And then I wanted to make them off several different shades though so that you could tell them apart. So that was like my reasoning behind that picture. And then this one I wanted to try blonde hair once again but this time a much more yellowish tone give her some green eyes and the green there's like four different shades of green in her eyes and two different shades of octopus tentacles I don't know I really like the way it turned out now this one I tried to do the melted rainbow thing I didn't really enjoy coloring this one as much and it's not because the picture is just as beautiful as all her pictures her artwork is amazing but I think it's just because I wasn't really sure what to do with it is mostly my reasoning there. So that's why I tried the rainbow effect. I actually tried to go in order of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, so on. And then I have these two pieces. With this one, I love those bird feathers. Let me try to come up close. Maybe you'll be able to see the color better. 
Her eyes, I know I used like light cerulean blue and like maybe true blue. I can't remember. But I wanted just different shades of blue in there. And I wanted to also attempt for the first time that reddish orange hair. I really love those feathers though. And for some reason I made the tentacles all purple this time. And for the girl on the right here, I wanted her eyes to really glow that bright blue eye. Like this is a nice bright blue, but it seems sort of not really toned down, but just soft. It's a very soft color. I wanted this to be so bright it almost glowed. So I think I used um, Prismacolor Light Aqua and Aquamarine, those type of colors for her eyes. Now for the tentacles, my thought process were that, you know, of course she has pink hair. I wanted to try and do pink hair for the first time. But I also thought, because her hair seemed to be blending into these two front tentacles, okay, maybe that means her hair, kind of like Medusa's hair or snakes, maybe her hair is turning into tentacles. And, like, maybe the monster is attached to her head or whatever it is, is attached to her head and has grabbed a hold of her head with these tentacles and is turning her into the same creature. And so, therefore, her hair is turning into tentacles. I wanted to keep the mask white. I don't know how well you'll be able to tell with my camera quality in this darkness um, but I only used like gray for the shadowing to keep the mask white because I just felt like up against those bright blue eyes the white mask looked good and if you're asking about like the patterns in the background I know she said that she had put those there so that you have more to color and I've seen people color in these patterns in the background and sometimes they look freaking crazy amazing but I just kind of feel like I'm going to color this for now and then eventually when forever years later when this whole book is filled, I'll still have a reason to come back and color in here and that'll be the patterns in the background. Sometimes I might color the patterns. This is the most recent one. This is the one I just finished today. And it seems like her hair, I wanted to try for red hair but it turned out more like peachy pastel -y orange. I kind of like it though. Um... But it seems like when you look at this picture, her hair, like here, kind of looks like it's turning into a stem or a trunk or something. Like there's even thorns. And then so it looks like her hair is reaching out and transforming into the stems for these flowers and leaves. So that's why I made these stems the same color as her hair. And I just really like the neon green flowers to complement her and the moths to have like these blue jewels so they almost sort of look poisonous maybe. I made her lips a bit darker. I don't think I colored in, I didn't color any of these ladies lips. She's the only one, I think I sort of added a tiny bit of pigment to hers. She's the only one that has the pinky glossy lips. This time I really went in there and gave her like a nice light nude lipstick. I really like the way it turned out. I think I'll zoom you in on it here in a minute so I can show you the detail in that. Um, but yeah, I wanted this to be a different shade than her hair, but to still almost blend in. Because her hair, even though it looks like that really nice pastel -y, orangey tone, there's a lot of red in her hair, to be honest. Like, I used crimson red, I used Tuscan red, um... I used poppy red. Poppy red would give it that orange tint, though. That's what her highlight is up here, is that poppy red a lot. So, yeah, and then this would be, this one would be the next one. Um, I like to go in order for some reason. You obviously don't have to go in order. You could flip through here and color your favorite ones. And I may skip some pictures and do that, but so far I've gone in order. Um, so... Yeah, this one is my favorite adult coloring book, though, this one. The Pop Manga coloring book. I'll just quickly flip through so that you can see them again. And then I'll zoom in on the lips of that latest one so you can see. So maybe there you'll be able to sort of see. I think the light is washing it out a lot, but... I left room for highlights and dark areas and things. So there you guys go. I'm blinded by the flashlight now, so I can't see anything. But I wanted to just show you <coughs> some, sorry, some of my completed 
colored pages in my adult coloring books. I only own two because I kind of want to fill these up before I purchase any more. But yeah, these are my favorite even though I've only owned two. The Living Colors 39 Peaceful Landscapes by Penny Press. And my top favorite is of course the Pop Manga coloring book. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching.